All right, guys, let's do some head swaps. Um, this is an image submitted by Brianna Watts, and it's a JPEG, but it's gonna do for this purpose, just to show you the method. So we have two photos here, and we are going to take this head and put it on this body. So when you're starting in Lightroom, you wanna make sure that your edits match exactly, or at least your skin tones match exactly. Um, because we, this is going to be our final photo, but we're gonna use this head. So let me show you how you can do this, um, match them up exactly. You're going to set one of these photos as a reference photo, okay? So we're gonna put them side by side. So just come down to the bottom here and right click and set as reference photo. <clears throat> okay, and then you're gonna to come to the other photo and right down here on the bottom, this RA here is reference view. So we're gonna click that, and now we have our photos side by side. And we're gonna match our skin tones up here. This is edited with Reverie and Oko 2, pretty much one click, and I put the Make It Pop Radio filter on them to give a um, little, little boost in the skin tones. Um, so I did, let me delete this so you can see. I did adjust his skin tone here because I thought this one was a tiny bit darker. Um, so I just took a radial gradient, and put a touch of exposure, I'm just at 0.1, and drew it over here, okay? I don't know how well you'll be able to see on a screen recording because um, they're a little inaccurate with the colors, but I think you can, you'll, you'll get the point. You just want your skin tones to match exactly, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do now that we have both edited is pull them into Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop downloaded um, and you have the Adobe um, Photography plan that's $10 a month, you can download Photoshop for free as part of that plan. Um, so once you have Photoshop downloaded, you're going to, in Lightroom, come up to Photo, Edit In, and Edit In Photoshop, and pull both of your photos into Photoshop. Um, I've already done that. So here we have, again, the final photo is going to be this one, and we are going to take this head and put it on. So um, right over here on the left, third down is the lasso tool. These may be in a different order for you, but it just looks like a little, literally looks like a lasso. So just click that and you're going to draw, it doesn't have to be perfect or exact or anything, you're just gonna draw around the head you wanna cut out, and then you're gonna come up to edit, and cut, okay? Then you're just gonna come right over and click your next photo, and you're gonna come up to edit and paste. Now we need to get these two heads to match, so how do we do that? Um, the next thing you're gonna do here is come up to edit, free transform, and this is going to allow us to resize, rotate, um, you can warp these, we don't wanna do that with the head though, so um, we're just gonna grab the bottom corner here and make it smaller. And you can drag the head around too here. And I'm just gonna put them side by side to try to get them the same size, roughly, okay? I, normally when I do head swaps, I'm really precise and really exact. Um, this video would be extremely unnecessarily long if I did that, so I'm just going to kind of whip through it so you guys can see and not have to sit through unnecessary, you know, tweaks. So um, I've got them the same size, and now I'm just going to drag over, and let me show you how I get these precise. Over here on the right, you have your Layers tab. Um, our second head is on the top layer. This is layer one. We're going to click that layer. Right above here is Opacity. You're going to click that little drop down and slide your opacity over to between like 40 and 50, okay? Now your next step is not to touch the photo. After you change your opacity, come up to edit and free transform again to get that box back because now we're gonna tweak it. So what you kinda wanna do is line something up. Here I have his ears lined up and I can see through because I've lowered the opacity. So I can see through to the bottom layer and see where his features are at. Um, angles are really important with head swaps. You want to make sure you get two heads that are like looking the same way. You don't want to have one head looking down and one looking up. Um, they really do have to be kind of similar angles for this to work well. Um, okay, but once you think you've got it about right, come back over to your top layer and just lift your opacity and then assess. That actually looks perfect right there. And there's one last step that we're going to do. Um, if you do have to go back in and Say I didn't think that looked good. After I change my opacity and I need to move it, then how do I move it? I come back up to edit, free transform, and that'll give me that box back and I can move it wherever I want. Um, so just go back and forth between lowering your opacity, making little tweaks. Um, you know, every time you move your opacity, come right back up to edit, free transform and get your little box back.
Okay, so now that we have that perfect, we're just going to go ahead and um, click that box off and make sure you're clicked on the layer. And you're gonna come over to your eraser tool. Okay, it's right here. And it looks literally like an eraser. You can come up here and change your size. Um, you can make it real big or real small. Hardness will um, determine how, if there's any feather to it. If you have it at 0% hardness, it's gonna be a really soft brush. If you have it at 100% hardness, it's gonna do really um, clean um, lines. So I usually have my brushes at zero, so they're feathered out a little bit. And then you can change the opacity of a brush too if you want it to just erase a little bit. Um, you can put it lower, but in this case, we want it to erase everything, so we have it at 100% opacity. And then our next step is just to go ahead and erase anything that, um, see, you know, you can see there that I erased a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna, on a PC, Control Z will take, take away what I just did. Um, another thing you can do if you wanna get this really precise is lower your opacity again so you can see exactly what's underneath there and what you're gonna be erasing it to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and lower my opacity for this and I'm still on the right layer and I'm just gonna take my brush and erase where I need to. And I'm just making sure that you can't see any remnants of, um, you know, like in through here where it wouldn't match perfectly. So I'm just erasing off and probably up here I need to erase a little bit because the shirt wouldn't match up exactly. And that's it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lift my opacity back up. And yeah, see I did, again, I erased a little bit too much. I could just undo that. Um, let's see. But you guys get the point, right? So you're just going in and erasing and cleaning up. Yep, so again, I don't wanna to be too precise, guys, because I am a perfectionist and I could sit here all night and try to make this perfect um, and you really, you know, it's not your photo, so you don't need to see all that, but just make sure that you erase it properly and um, that's it. And once you're done with that, obviously, you guys, like I could have done a better job on that, but I think that gives you a good idea of the techniques. So after you're done and you get it perfect, you're gonna come up back over to your layers box and there's these little four little horizontal lines here. You're gonna click that and come down to flatten image. Okay, now that makes it one solid image ready for sharpening, saving, you know, whatever you wanna do. While we're here, since I have you guys in Photoshop, now we're done with the head swap, that's done. But what the other thing I wanna show you if you're here and you've never watched any of my videos is the levels trick. Um, come up here in your adjustments box and you can expand your dynamic range with levels. Um, so you click that little crown looking thing and it'll pull up your histogram. And you have three markers. So we're gonna focus on the white marker and the black marker. And all you do is drag that marker in to the end of the histogram and it expands your dynamic range and gives you some contrast and, and pop. And you can do it with the blacks too. But look at that, it's so, so pretty. So if we take that off, you can probably see the difference. See the pop that gave that just super easily? All right, and then after you do any um, adjusting in Lightroom, you do have to go ahead and flatten your image to um, be ready to save it. So that's it, that's the tutorial. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know. You can ask in the comments, you can ask in the group, and I always get back to people. Um, again, you know, I didn't do a perfect job on this because I just wanted to get the video over with so you guys could have something quick and easy to watch, but I mean, it really is a very, very simple um, procedurally. You just have to take your time and get them lined up properly and all that. So I hope that helped, guys. Um, you know, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know, and that's it. Hope you guys have a great night.